We want to welcome everybody to Church Unlimited, all of our campuses, uh, online family, and our prison ministry. Can we give everybody a huge welcome to Church Unlimited? And I appreciate that uh, introduction. We truly do love, 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 love you. Um, and as it was said, I'll never forget about 18 years ago being on this property whenever it was dirt and praying and hearing the vision of Pastor Bill, who has poured into us. When we started Keystone Church in Dallas-Fort Worth area, we started Keystone uh, just about 20 years ago. Uh, this was one of the ministries that poured into us. And Pastor Bill specifically has poured into me. So at all of our campuses, everybody, could we just give honor to the house and that you're in a great church with a great vision? It's beautiful. Well, I love this series that we're in, Waiting Well. Waiting Well. What a powerful, helpful series of talks already that Pastor Bill has led us through. And today, I want to talk about a hero. Someone that is a hero for me, but it's a hero that you have probably never heard of. And this hero is in the Bible, and he's found in Joshua. Joshua chapter 14, we are introduced to someone named Caleb. And so what I'd love for you to do is just turn to Joshua chapter 14, if you have a Bible, or if you follow Scripture on your phone, or you can follow along on the screens, wherever you are at all of our campuses. But let's just jump right in because I believe what you're going to see today from, again, someone that you may barely or not know at all, there's some powerful lessons for waiting well. Waiting well. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. And the Bible says, Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, that's our boy, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, whenever I say one of those hard names, I'm totally faking it. So I'm going to act like I, I know the Hebrew, you know, and, 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 and you know, from Jephunneh. Anyway, whatever. That was almost like a Makuna Matata. But anyway, <laughs> Jephunneh, Jephunneh, potato, potato, the, Ke the Kenizzite. Turn to your neighbor and say Kenizzite. The Kenizzite said to him, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh Barnea, concerning you and me. I was 40 years old. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him, Moses, word again as it was in my heart, but my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. Now we'll pause right there, let me just bring you up to speed on the story here. Now first of all, whenever you're reading the Bible, and you hear about the people of Israel, okay? That's a metaphor in Scripture for our relationship with God. So whenever you see God relating to the people of Israel, he's talking about and giving us a foretaste of how he wants to relate to us. And so here we see a story of the people of Israel. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but suffice it to say that God had given the people of Israel a promised land, and they lived on that promised land, and God had promised them, man, stay on the land. Now, there was a famine, and the people of Israel left that land, but they stayed gone too long. And in the vacuum of nobody living there, other people had moved in. And so God, through his providence, he basically said, I want to move the people of Israel back to the promised land. And so he brought Moses, the leader, to lead the people right to the edge of the promised land. And so Moses here, we learn, he sent in 12 spies. He said, I know in our absence, other things have, have occupied the land. And let me just go ahead and give you a quick application. And this was just totally free. Understand this, when you leave the land that God has promised to you, it leaves a vacuum that others will fill. Okay, so what that means is that if you have gotten lazy with your parenting and you've stopped shepherding your kids, other voices will fill the vacuum in your kids', kids ears. Guys, if you have gotten lazy with tending your marriage and you've stopped dating your spouse, there is a vacuum there, and you do not want other voices to fill it. So again, people of Israel, metaphor with our walk with God, 
here there was a vacuum, and yes, evil people had filled the vacuum. Evil people had inherited the land and began to grow it. They were so evil, it even alludes to cannibalism. I mean, it was a dark, dark place. And so Moses said, hey, we got to go see what has grown in the vacuum of our leadership. And by the way, one more. I just got to give this. The Holy Spirit, I really do believe, telling me to share this with you. Understand that when the church steps out of its leadership role in our culture, there is a vacuum. And if we step out, what voices do you believe are going to step in? I mean, just ask yourself, man, why would I be quiet? Why would I step back? Man, let's step in and let's let our light shine. Let's be salt and light to a world that needs us. They need us. And so Moses said, all right, we're sending in 12 spies. So the 12 spies all went in, and when the 12 spies came back, 10 spies, they all saw the same thing. 10 spies said one report, and two spies said a totally different report. The ten spies, they were like, oh, it's filled with giants. These are evil people. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. They have these huge walls and fortified cities. We can't do it. The two spies, they said, there's walls. There's giants. With God, we can do it. Okay? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. By the way, we have a rule. No golf claps. If you're in, you're in. No, no. if you're in, you're in. If you're in, you're in. All right, so let's pick up. So here we see Caleb is one of those two spies. Joshua and Caleb. Our boy today is Caleb. So Caleb is one of the two spies. Now what happened? When they came back, the negative report got more clicks and likes. You with me? The negative report got more clicks and likes than the positive report. And it caused the people of Israel, their hearts to melt. And what do they do? They're on the brink of walking into their great God-given potential. What do they do? They turned away. Forty years of wandering in the wilderness. And there's two people after 40 years left to tell the story. All the whole generation had passed away. Two people left alive who had, who had, who had stepped there. Joshua and Caleb. The two with the good report are left living and talking about it. So here we find ourselves. And so verse 9 Caleb is talking to Joshua. Moses is now dead. They're, they have moved into the promised land. They started conquering, and Caleb says this. Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. That's the second time we've heard that phrase. Holy followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Just as he said, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel walked in, in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am this day 85 years old. So just do the math. He was 40 years old when they walked away, 40, 40 years of wandering, five years of fighting. He's now 85 years old. <clears throat> Verse 11, I am still as strong today as I was the day that Moses sent me. I can't just read that. you got to give it something. That's the way Caleb said, I am still today as strong as the day that Moses sent me. Amen. Yeah, there we go. Let's go. That's what, there's just fire and vigor, right? There's passion and purpose. My strength now is as my strength was then for war and for going and coming. So now give me this hill country. Give me this Austin, give me this Lampasas. Come on, Texas. Y'all got to be with me. <laughs> hill country. <laughs> give me this hill country. You got to read the Bible for fun. Give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day, for you have heard on that day how the Anakim were there. Okay, Anakim were the giants that had inhabited the land. And by the way, when you see the giants of this day, if you've ever heard of the story of David and Goliath, Goliath who was the giant and David took him out with a slingshot, these are the great, 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 great grand ancestors of Goliath. Goliath came from the Anakim. All right. I heard how the Anakim were there and with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Then Joshua blessed 
him, Caleb. And he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord. There it is again, the God of Israel. Now the name of Hebron formerly was Kiriath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, and the land had rest from war. Caleb. You would say of Caleb, man, he's just, he's just built different. This guy's not normal. He's just built different. And when I think of being built different, do you ever follow some social media accounts and you're like, man, those people are just different. Those people are, are wild. Those people are bold. Like, like uh, if you follow Red Bull. Anybody follow Red Bull? Man, it is awesome. When you follow Red Bull, you'll see every single post. These people are doing extraordinary, amazing things. They're jumping out of helicopters with skis on, on this double black diamond back bowl, and they're jumping out of it and landing and skiing and with the powder in their face and jumping, and, and they're Formula One racing around corners and BMX biking. and I mean, Red Bull is amazing. And you would think, man, if I drink Red Bull... I'll be built different. <laughs> All I got to do is drink Red Bull, and I'll be built different. But I think the average consumer of Red Bull might be a little different than their advertising. <laughs> like, if they were to have a post on the average consumer, I think it would be somebody with bloodshot eyes in the middle of the night, <laughs> bloodshot eyes, gaming or writing a paper, and barely staying awake, and so they're sipping on Red Bull just trying to stay awake. That's the average consumer. And I think that we have a problem in church life that the average Christian, though God has wired you to be built different, God has wired you to be adrenaline-pumping, heart-stopping, adventure, risk-takers. And yet what do we do? We sip just enough of God, just enough of church, sipping just to say we're awake. Just sipping enough not to be asleep. I'm here. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. But we're sipping, believing we could just stay awake. When God says, no, 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 be built different. The life I have for you is you say to that mountain, it'll move. The life I have for you is conquer, dominion, exercise your authority. And that's the spirit of Caleb. As a matter of fact, the title of today's message is this, Waiting Well Requires a Different Spirit. If you want to wait well, I mean, you're in a season of waiting, waiting to get pregnant. You're in a season of waiting, waiting for your business to take off. You're in a season of waiting waiting for that close group of friends that you could travel together and, and, and have those great, but you're in a season of waiting, waiting for connection in your relationship, waiting for connection in your marriage, waiting for intimacy in your marriage, waiting for breakthrough, waiting for a healing. If you're in a season of waiting, how do I wait well? How do I wait well? Well, you gotta have a different spirit. That's what the Bible said about, about Caleb, Numbers 14, 24, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit, and has followed me fully. There it is. Again, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his, his descendants shall possess it. So there's a few things I want to walk through that really made Caleb have that different spirit. And the first thing is you got to have faith, not fear. People of a different spirit, like what God is talking about here, that wait well and endure well and have that spirit, that, that beautiful, built, different kind of attitude of Caleb, they have faith, not fear. The people of Israel, whenever they listened to the ten spies, the ten spies saw the very same thing that the two spies saw. They were both looking at the same facts. Those were not in, our, in debate here. They both saw giants. They both saw fortified walls. They both saw all the details. But the ten had a bad report, and the two had a good report. What was the difference? The ten had a filter of fear. And I want you to know today, some of you have been giving yourself to a filter of fear. And that fear is contagious. That fear is going to make its way into your marriage, and it's going to make its way into your family culture. 
You're going to have a group of people that are perpetually worried. You're going to have a group of people that are always have a poverty mindset and think of their lack. You're going to have people that are, that are always looking at the giants and, and coming up with excuses why things can't be done. People with the filter of fear, they tend to be a little bit negative. I can't stand negativity. You know, it's just like this, I don't know, I don't know, God will do it if God wants to do it, I don't know. <laughs> what? That's not a different spirit. That's not the spirit of Caleb. Yeah. Caleb said, there are giants there, and those giants are meant to be conquered. They're eating my food, they're plundering our crops. <laughs> because while the ten saw the limits of the land, the two saw the greatness of their Lord. Say that. Say that. And maybe you need to see the greatness of your Lord. Stop looking at your lids. Stop looking at your limits. Stop looking at your lack. And you just start letting the words of faith come out of your mouth. We will, we will, we will, we will. Don't give in. Don't give in. So it's faith, not fear. And I'll say one more thing about this. It's going to get hard. Can you imagine how hard it was for the two? to be totally different because in our world that is consumed with fear it's like the whole culture will be running this way off the ledge and that means some of us called believers are going to be running this way and it's going to be awkward and you're going to get labeled for it and you're going to be misunderstood and people aren't going to get you don't live at the level of the lowest rung on the ladder of your life Climb up. Let God give you the filter of, fe of faith, not fear. And here's the good news. You get to choose which filter you're going to have. By the Spirit of God, which God promises us, for those who follow Christ, you get to change your mindset. And today, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of our service together to begin following Christ for the very first time. And he's going to give you the power to change the way you think. He's going to give you that power. Okay, number two. What we learned from Caleb, built different. Attitude is everything. The dude had an incredible attitude. I mean, you heard him. I'm still as strong as today as when Moses sent me. Was he? No. I mean, come on, you're 85 years old. He wasn't some freak. He was 85 years old. And back then, they didn't have nutrition like we have today. Back then, people didn't live. I'm talking about in, the, in this era right here. To be 85 years old was a long, long life. They didn't have health care like we have now. They didn't have exercise like we have now. And so Caleb had lived a very long life. And I'm telling you, he was probably feeble. His bones, his muscles. What is speaking right now is not his, his muscles. What's speaking right now is his mind. It's his attitude. There's two toxic attitudes that grow when you're waiting that I want to point out. There's many, but there's two I want to point out. Number one is bitterness. Bitterness. Bitterness will poison your potential. I am struck by the fact that after 45 years of not experiencing God's potential for his life, he didn't get bitter. And sometimes you're in the waiting room of life, and it's not because of something you've done. It's because you're suffering because of something someone else has done. You're reaping the harvest of someone else's sin. And this may mean that you're on the backside of a bitter divorce that you didn't ask for. You want to follow the Lord, but, but, but the other person is running as far and as fast as they can, and you're, you're having to pick up the pieces at home. You're, you're not living the life that you envision when you said, I do. And while you're not perfect, and we all have our parts, but listen, you can honestly say, hey, I didn't ask for this. Watch out for bitterness. Bitterness is dangerous. Look at this in Scripture. Hebrews 12, 15 says, See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Ephesians 4, 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Attitude is everything. Another toxic attitude that pops up whenever you're in waiting is jealousy. Because you're waiting on that life, you're waiting on that fulfillment, and you see others experiencing the favor that you want. You see others experiencing the life that you want. 
You see others experiencing a financial reward that you want. And, and you can get a little jelly. It happens. In our social media age, you're seeing people post, and it's been filtered, and it's five takes later, and you're seeing their curated picture, and you're comparing it to your naked reality. And it's not right. It's not right. Jealousy. Caleb could have been jealous of Joshua. Joshua was the leader. Joshua was the one that they turned to. Joshua was the one that was the emblem of faithfulness. And here's old Caleb. Joshua has a whole book just named Joshua. <laughs> and there's no evidence that Caleb had any kind of alternate attitude toward his buddy Joshua. He celebrated Joshua's life. And, 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 and here's the thing. Comparison is a trap and comparison will lead you away from the promised land that God has for you. And let me tell you, so here's the truth. Stop wishing for someone else's blessing and receive the blessing God has for you. That means you run in your lane and you live it with a smile on your face and then you can high five the Joshua's in your life and you might get a chapter when he gets a book you run your lane, and God will give you the glory. God will give you the glory. So watch those bad attitudes. Watch those bad attitudes. And then next, three, possess what has been conquered. That's what a different spirit does. Built different people, they possess what has been conquered. Now, this is the point I debated if I should include it because it's kind of hard to get. But I was like, man, y'all been getting Bill Cornelius' preaching. Y'all are going to get it, all right? So here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to lean in right now because it's a little, little complicated. I want you to check this out. Joshua chapter 11, verse 23. Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord had spoken to Moses. Okay? So here we see the whole land had been conquered. But then in chapter 13, just two chapters later, now Joshua was old and advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, you are old and advanced in years. By the way, thanks, God. <laughs> you know, Captain Obvious. And there remains yet very much land to possess. So in two chapters, you hear what seems like two different messages. In chapter 11, you conquered the whole land. Chapter 13, there remains yet much land to possess. So which is it? Both. Both. I've got a word for you. If you have crossed the line of faith and you have begun to follow Jesus, and you raised your hand in one of these services, and you got baptized, God has conquered the power of sin and death over your life. <laughs> Praise God. Thank Jesus. The whole land has been conquered. There's not a part of your life that wasn't saved, but possibly there's still room and much land to possess. It all flies under the flag of Christ, but let's, let's change the analogy. If your soul is like a house, how many of the rooms are open to God? If your heart is like a house, oh yeah, God, speak to the bedroom, speak to my marriage. I want to hear everything you have to say about my marriage. Yeah, give it to me. I'm ready to take notes. Oh yeah, God, let's go into the kids' rooms. Yes, yes, those doors are wide open. Help me, God. I need help. I need help parenting. I'm eager. All right, let's sharpen the pencil. Let's lean forward. Let's take the notes. But maybe there's a room that's shut. Maybe the door of your finances. The minute they start preaching on giving, arms crossed, lean back, and it gets cold. Like poltergeist, you can see your breath cold. <laughs> and that just tells me there is still much land for you to possess. That you haven't yet figured it out. That God, in Malachi 3 says, if you'll trust me with every room, and if you'll trust me with giving, give the first, give the 10, not the last, not the least, not the leftovers. You bring the first, you bring the best, and I will open up the windows of heaven. I will shower down upon you. And let me say this, I haven't said this in any other service, but this miracle doesn't happen with stingy, selfish people. 
This happens with sacrifice and passion and tears coming down your cheek as you write a check that you wonder how on earth God put it in you to be able to afford to write that check. This is a miracle house of giving and sacrifice. But you don't get the story if you're not in the game. We're built different. We're just built different. Okay, I went a little long on that. Possess what has been conquered. But uh, I do want to say one more thing. All right, here we go. One last thing about this point, and that is that there are some among you today that you have not yet given God your eternal life. And today's the day he's going to conquer sin and death for you. And at the end of our time together, you're going to raise your hand in faith, and you're going to say, that's me. And you're going to pray to receive Christ. And then we're going to help you at Church Unlimited to conquer the ground, to possess the ground in every area of your life. Because we want God to have your eternal life, a home in heaven when you die, but we want God to give you an abundant life every single day on this earth. Yeah, let's go. All right, next. Next thing we see with Caleb is labels were not lids with this guy. He refused to live at the lid of labels. Some of us, we do live under the lid of our labels. You say, what are you talking about, Brandon? You remember when I mentioned that Caleb was a Kenizzite? Kenizzite. Now, you just blew past that, and you think, oh, that must be like a, a little, you know, relative group in the people of Israel, maybe one of the 12 tribes. I don't know, a tribe of Kenizzite. I don't know. No, no, no. When you dive in and you see the Kenizzites were outcasts. The Kenizzites were not Hebrews. The Kenizzites were outside of the family of faith. Are you ready for this? So Caleb, one of the most faith-filled members of the family of God, had been adopted not by birth, but by choice into the family of God. Is anybody ready to preach this yet? He had been adopted, he, like Rahab, if you're into the story, like Rahab had been adopted into the family of God Caleb is also one who had been adopted into the family of God. And the Kenizzites were outcasts. And yet here in the Bible forever, they're saying, you Kenizzite. Oh yeah, there's the dude, the Kenizzite. Not only that, did you know that Caleb's name, it means dog. Some of you are like, man, that's my grandpa name. I want to be called dog, D-O-double-G, Snoop Dog. <laughs> Call me D-A-W-G, dog. What's up? Bring it in close, dog. <laughs> no, back then, to call someone a dog is like, uh, it's, like a, it's, it's, a, it's an insult. It's like curl your nose at them. But here we see Caleb refusing to be defined by the lids and the labels that have been spoken over him. And I want to speak this to you. Some of you are new believers. Every week you raise your hand to, to, every week somebody new raises their hand to become a follower of Christ. And you're a new believer. Can I say this? Do not allow the voice over you that says, well, I'm a baby Christian. Well, I'm an immature believer. I'm a baby. I don't know the stories. Rather, you need to say, hey, I'm first generation on a new family tree of faith. I'm first generation. And we're changing the story. Don't live at the level of your labels, whether it's your past. And by the way, we should never hang the past over our fellow believers in Christ. That is sin. We should never do that. And then finally, never, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever <laughs> retire from your purpose. Never retire. 85 years old. I want that land. Give me the land with the giants. And I think there was something personal with that request because the giants had punked the 10 and the word of the giants and the rumor of the giants had punked all of Israel. And I think for 45 years, Caleb was like, give me the giants, give me the giants, give me the giants. Now, I know some of us are empty nesters and maybe you are in a retirement season with your finances. I'm not saying don't, don't retire financially. But there's something about being in the family of God. You never, ever, ever retire from your purpose. Ever. You're never done helping build God's church. This is something I believe with all of my heart. Is everybody within the sound of my voice, everybody online, prison ministry, wherever you may be, whatever campus, 
I want you to know you're in this church right now. And that means you have chosen Church Unlimited to be your church. We have limited days on this earth. We have limited days on this earth. And one day we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to give an account for the days we spent on this earth. And I want you to know that when you think about the church that you are a part of, you have chosen well a church that will push you, even if it makes you uncomfortable, push you into a go big mentality. Push you into a faith where one day when you stand before God, you're going to say, thank you, God, that I was a part of Church Unlimited because I never, ever lost my purpose. I was pushed into purpose. I never lost my purpose. We kept sacrificing. We kept serving. We kept stretching. That's our prayer for you. Can we bow our heads together and close our eyes? This is that moment I was referring to. This is the moment where some of us are going to ask Christ to step out of heaven and make his home in our heart for the very first time. Very first time. Now, the way we want to do it here is we all pray together out loud. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, our heads are bowed for privacy, and we speak out loud together. Number one, if you're a Christian and you've been a Christian for many years, speak, pray with us out loud. It'll remind you of your faith. And it will also encourage people around you to pray it for the first time. I would say also we, we want to give you the opportunity with heads bowed and eyes closed that if it's your first time to pray this, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand when we're done. And in doing so, know that leadership, that pastors at each campus everywhere, they see you. If you're online, I'm going to ask you to write, I just prayed or I raised my hand. So are you ready? Let's, let's just pray after me. You ready? God, I am a sinner. Jesus died for my sin. He conquered death, came back to life so that I could have life. So adopt me today, God, as your child. May I never be the same again. Did you just pray that for the first time? And if that was you, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to number three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. One, if you prayed it for the first time at all of our campuses, don't think about the person to your left or to your right, too. Are you ready? Like a child reaching up for the hand of a new father, a heavenly father. One, two, did you pray? Three, hands up, all over, hands up, hands up. Beautiful, all over the room. Every service, it's been this way, hands up. God, would you conquer sin and death in my life? God, would you give me a home in heaven when I die? God, would you be my savior? God, I thank you for what you're doing here at Church Unlimited, we praise you, we love you. Build this church in Jesus' name we pray, amen.